What's up, guys? Welcome to the show today. Little Friday episode to end your week. And today's topic, we're going to be going over some draft pick values and what kind of trades you can get done by moving some of your picks away. Thank you guys for joining. If you have two seconds, please hit subscribe below. If you do subscribe, comment, subscribe. I will gladly respond to anyone that does that. Thank you guys so much. Like the video as well, and thank you for coming to the channel. So today, little draft pick value. I'm going to go over an array of draft picks, kind of a couple in the first round, one in the second round, some trades that I would do if I'm trying to move away picks in this year's draft to gain some players or just safer assets, I think, onto my team. So first trade we're going to go over today, how about we trade Trevor Lawrence or in we're going to get Trevor Lawrence. We're going to trade away 1-6 and 4-7 to go get Trevor Lawrence. Now, 1-6 could be that part in the draft where maybe it's Jaden Daniels, maybe it's Drake May. Maybe Malik Neighbors, Brock Bowers kind of gets there. It's that second tier behind Caleb and Marvin Harrison Jr. And for me personally, I still think Trevor Lawrence has just a better career path than maybe some of these other rookies do. Now, I totally understand how there may be some more upside to a Jaden Daniels or a Drake May, but that's kind of the give and take when it comes to these trades. We're attacking someone we see as a safer asset to get off some of that risk of this being a first round bust where... Yes, Trevor Lawrence may not be the 1-1 one, one we all thought he was, but he's still a top 12 guy and probably still has top 5, 6, 7 upside as a super flex QB. So it's kind of just a different way to think about using some of your picks. Next one, this one's fun, man. How about we trade 1-2 away and we go get Anthony Richardson on our team? I think this one makes a lot more sense just from the fact that Caleb probably goes 1-1. One, one. If you're sitting at 1-2 and you don't need a wide receiver, let's capitalize on the hype of Marvin Harrison Jr. and go get Anthony Richardson, someone who I think can be a top five quarterback in this league, especially when it comes to fantasy value. If you haven't already, check out our previous video about Anthony Richardson where Andy and I talk about the upside of his rushing ability, but the dude was on pace for top three in points per game before he got hurt last year. Now, it is a very small sample size, but we all know the ceilings there and people are going to want to get them some shares of Marvin Harrison, so maybe we can capitalize on that hype and move that for a quarterback that I would love to get onto my fantasy football team. So, next one here, we're going to talk about a later first round pick and an idea maybe here. How about we trade 112 and a fourth to go get Jaden Reed onto our team, someone who already proved he can be productive in an elite NFL offense for the Packers last year. Now, he may not be a top five wide receiver, so that's kind of where this boom bust uh, safety and risk profile kind of come in here. Jaden Reed, top 20 guy last year, and I think he's going to be a top 24 guy uh, while he's on the Packers. He proved to be maybe the best Packers wide receiver. I think we are still, you know, it's kind of out on Christian Watson that I don't think he can stay healthy, and I would definitely prefer Jaden Reed there. So maybe he doesn't have that that Marvin Harrison upside, but also we're moving 112 to go get him. We're not moving a first half, uh, first round pick here. So I think Jaden Reed would be a very efficient use of your late first round pick to just get someone that's going to be a starter for your team for the next couple of years. And a lot of times if you're drafting at 112 and you won the title last year, that's a guy that is very useful for you. Someone you can plug into your wide receiver three spot, your flex spot, or just use during bye week. So I like getting Jaden Reed for a late first round pick here. And then last but not least, something to do with second round picks here. I like going after Deontay Johnson, who I think is probably going to be the number one weapon for Bryce Young in Carolina. Now, Bryce Young, kind of we just have to forget about last year of his career. But I think Canales coming over from Tampa Bay, I think Deontay Johnson is going to be a very good wide receiver one for Bryce Young. I think he's going to get a bunch of targets. I think he's going to be open. And I think he's going to be a consistent piece for you. I don't think he's going to be wide receiver six. But I think this dude's going to be on the field catching balls. And hopefully he is over his touchdown woes from his Pittsburgh time. Because that would not be something we want to carry over to Carolina. But just when it comes down to it, I think Bryce Young, while he may not fully bounce back to Caleb Williams, Anthony Richardson hype, I think he bounces back and has a decent little year. Let's not forget Canales turned around Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield in the past two years. So I think Bryce Young has just as good of a shot in what is probably an easier division. The Falcons probably win that division or they're going to be projected to but that's going to be based on their offense I know they have Morris coming over at defense too but I still think that division is a little weak 
And so I think Carolina should be fine when it comes to fantasy production if Deontay Johnson is who we're talking about. So I know this was a shorter episode, but I like to keep it short on Fridays. We all got stuff to do after work. Go have a beer. Go have a drink. Watch this video and contemplate how to attack to get these guys with your draft picks this year. But thank you guys for tuning in. Hit me up if you have any questions. And peace, y'all. Appreciate it.